There we go. Hello and happy, happy Tuesday. My name is Wendy Lee from creativelyyours.com and I'm an independent stamp demonstrator in the US and excited you're joining me today for our crafty project. Yay, 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 yay. Okay. Oh my goodness, I did Hello, it again. Hello and happy, happy Tuesday. My name is Wendy Lee. Good grief, I forget that it does that. It pops up the window for YouTube since we're live on YouTube now and then it starts playing it. It's crazy. I don't know. I'll figure this all out someday, right? Good. I'm, I'm excited. I can see copyright infringement. What? Oh, for saying happy, happy Tuesday. You guys are so funny. No, all good. So glad to see Kay and Jean. And let's see, Ginger's here. Hopefully some others will jump in. Too funny. You guys are cracking me up. All right. So what are we doing today? I've got a fun one for you, or at least I think it's fun. It's super fast and easy. There's not a ton of layers to it. I know, shocking, um, but it's adorable and I love it. So um, we'll talk about that in just a minute. You're going to see behind me a little peek. That is a peek of my first presentation for our Makers Mojo event that's happening July 29th and 30th. If you've not registered, join us. Join us. We'd love to have you. Um, the event is $45 US dollars. Um, it's available globally. So anybody can join us. Um, it's an online event. Um, and we have a really, really good time. We have a special guest again this time. I'm not telling you who. And so there'll be an extra presentation for that. And then there's 10 live presentations between Friday afternoon and Saturday all day. It's lots and lots of fun, lots of prizes. So if you want to get in on all the prizes, you want to go ahead and join because, um, yeah, that's, that's the best opportunity. All right. I'm going to go ahead and switch the camera over. Let's get started with our crafty project today. All right, so we are doing, let's see if I can find this. I can see your, <laughs> your comments. You disappeared on me as soon as I switched screens. There we are. Okay, hopefully this doesn't like start playing sound. <laughs> and I have to go through it all over again. Let's see. Mute, mute, where's mute? Mute, all right, I'm on mute. Good, good, good. Oh, Kathleen, you're here too. Great, great, great to see everybody. All right, so we are going to make this what I think is a stinking cute card. I'm really into the little critters right now, if you can't tell. Um, we had hip, spinning hippos last week, um, and this week we're doing a little bit of a happy hippo. So this is cute. I hope you can see all the details. You've got the cloud background. We're going to do a little blending, a little embossing. We've got some texture. Brought the design to the inside with that blending. So super, super simple, but don't you think this would just leave a smile um, when you send this to someone to celebrate any occasion? I mean, definitely I went birthday in my head, but really this could celebrate any occasion, right? Could be masculine, could be feminine. You could change the paint to a different color if you wanted to, to make it a little more masculine, um, but it's so much fun. So we are featuring the Elephant Parade stamp and die bundle. Lots of cute little elements in here. And you know, since we talked about the hippo dies last week, you could take some of those adorable little, um, you know, the umbrella and the sunglasses and stuff, the dies from the hippos dies, and you could play with them with this little hippo, uh, sorry, elephant as well. And I think that would be tons and tons of fun. So I do have an elephant parade card class registration going on now. I've got a short registration on this one. It ends on Monday the 25th. So not even a week left to uh, register. I will show you a sneak peek of those projects at the end of this presentation today. All right. So let's get started on our fun of creating our card. So I am using a thick basic white card base. It's four and a quarter by 11. Um, you guys know already, but I'm going to tell you anyway, just in case we've got some new people watching with us. Um, I will put the complete supply list so you have links to everything. So if you need to purchase any products, you can just click on them and add those to your shopping cart and place your order. And there will also be a complete list of cut dimensions by, by parts so that you'll know what this is so you can recreate it. You might want to use something you have at home. You might already have everything I'm using. I don't know. We'll find out, right? Okay, so I've got my thick basic weight cardstock base. I prefer thick to regular um, cardstock when I deal with weight and vanilla because it just gives it a little more oomph, right? It's a little more substantial. It makes it feel a little nicer, right? 
Next, I've got my layer. I think this is three, three and three quarters by five, but definitely look after the video. Don't quote my measurements here. And this, we are going to run through the embossing machine and add this painted texture to it. So we'll do that. <clears throat> we'll pull that in. Isn't that great? Don't you love all that texture? I love our 3D embossing folders. They're so much fun. All right, now I'm going to pop this on the front of the card and I'm going to use some dimensionals. Let me find those. There they are. I'm just going to plop some of these on super quick. And why not stick one in the center? You could you could use more if you want to. I typically use four or five. Sometimes I go a little crazier. Depends on my mood and how much I have going on on my layers on the outside here. So I'm just going to center this. I've been doing a lot of weight on weight cards lately. I guess it's the mood I'm in. I go back and forth, right? Um, all right. So next layer. Let's let's do this little cloud background. So much fun. So I've got a scrap of just white cardstock. And I'm taking my cloud punch. If you guys don't know how to use our punches, they um, got a little uh, gold gild gilded leafing on there. And so our punches uh, store flat and they're locked. And so you just slide this and it unlocks them and the back end raises. So this is the side you squeeze. This is the side you put the paper in. Now for a punch like this, I like to use it upside down because then I can see where I'm punching and I can just squeeze and punch that up. Now, if you've got some arthritis issues, I have some days where I cannot squeeze with my hands. I could have laid that down and just leaned on it and pushed that to punch what I needed, right? You might need a little bigger scrap of paper when you do it that way, um, but it's, it all works great. All right, so to close this, I'm just gonna squeeze that close, slide that lock back up, and now it's ready to put back on my shelf, but it takes up very little room, much better than our old whale tail. Um, punches that we had back in the day, right? Back in the day, it wasn't that long ago, really. <laughs> um, oh, how funny. Tens and tens of fun, no pun intended, right? Yes, <laughs> I love that, Jean. All right, so a scrap piece of paper, and I've got my strip of white um, cardstock that I'm gonna add my background to. So I'm gonna use this punch as like a stencil, and so I'm just gonna lay it out. I'm gonna bring in my balmy blue ink pad and a blending brush. Now, I like to take the ink right off the blending or right off the ink pad. Like you can just really rub it right across here. Now, if you're worried about dark spots, you can start off the paper if you want. And then you just kind of, I like to use a circular motion and I'm just going to apply a little bit of ink. I'm going to go in for a little bit more and I'm going to move this. So I'm just applying ink as I move my way down. I'm going to flip it back and forth right? Because I might want my clouds to look a little different as I move down my page. And let's see if we can get another one down here, right? And just kind of moving them around. I want to make this fun cloud background. And I'm not worried about dark spots. I think it's kind of fun when you get some dark and light spots. Oh, it's starting to come together. I don't know if you can see this. Hopefully you guys can see this on video. It's very subtle. You could go deeper in color if you wanted it to be a little um, darker. So here, I'm just moving this around. Hopefully you're getting what I'm doing. Is it coming to life? Oh, you're waiting for a flight to Mexico. Oh, Susan, hopefully you have a good trip. And lots of fun. I know I just got a notification today. I have a trip in August. Um, I'm going to Stampin' Up's backstage event. I'm super excited about it. Um, and uh, I just got a notification that they changed my flight, my connecting flight, and I'm not happy about it. So I've got to see what I can do. Probably nothing, but <laughs> you know, you can always ask, right? Whoops. All right, so if that happens, you could take this down, your, your paper, so it doesn't move. I'm not gonna worry about it. It's not an exact thing. All right, so do you love that? So isn't that kind of fun, a nice cloud background? Now, I've got more color below than I do up. If I wanted to go back in, I could add some more up here. Let's just do that a little bit, just to show you what I mean. So I can come back in, add a little depth of color, so now you can kind of see the cloud a little bit better up there. Okay. I'm going to set this aside. I am going to go back to this because we're going to bring this design to the inside 
as well, but we'll take a break for now and we'll finish our front first. All right. So believe it or not, I'm gonna adhere this flat right to my card front. It's the full length of my card. I love crossing my um, layers. So that's not all so structured rectangles, right? So I'm just using a little stamp and seal. You could use liquid glue if you prefer. I am a stamp and seal fan. Not everyone is. I know in our Makers Mojo group that comes up a lot because I think I'm the only one that is a fan of the stamp and seal. I think a lot of other people use liquid glue primarily, but we all know that liquid glue and I don't always get along, right? <laughs> yes, for sure. Okay, I'm gonna bring in my basic black strip. I believe this is four and a quarter by seven eighths. And do I have a buddy? Oh, I didn't grab an embossing buddy. Let's see if I can steal one from across the room. I meant to grab one. We have them for sale again. I'm very excited about that. There's actually a whole little collection that you can get. It's an embossing toolkit. I don't believe I added it into the supply list, but it's got the, um, I'll pull up the catalog and let you see what I'm talking about. It's got the, um, let's see. Let me see if I can find it. It's in the autumn harvest page, wherever that one is. I probably already passed it. All right, we're gonna try again. Rustic Harvest, 4850. So if you haven't seen this yet, let me kind of get there. So this is my catalog. So I write in my catalogs, so you're gonna see weird things that you might not normally see in the catalog. So this is what I'm referring to right here. This is the Embossing Editions Toolkit. And so it's really nice. It comes with a little embossing buddy, which is this little um, pouch that I use, anti-static pouch. And then it's got a, a brush to be able to wipe away any of the excess powder. And then you've got some um, a little tool there to be able to tweezers to be able to hold your uh, cardstock. And then you've got this little tray and this has a little nubbin. I'm gonna call it a nubbin for lack of the better way to say it, but it, it's a plug basically. So as you sprinkle the powder over your um, project, you can collect all the powder and put it back into that little jar. Now I don't, I have one of these, an old one. I don't typically use it um, because I'm super lazy. Isn't that terrible? So I put mine in little plastic containers, but, I need the anti-static. This one's almost dead. It's almost empty. I'm probably gonna have to order that toolkit just to get a new talc powder or whatever this is. I don't really know what's in it. Magic anti-static powder. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> all right, so let's bring in our Versamark. Oh, look, I grabbed the pretty one today. And we are going to ink up our sentiment. And I gotta move it closer to me because I cannot see. My hope is I'm gonna end up somewhat centered on this piece of paper and left to right, but we'll see what happens. If I'm even somewhat straight, I'll be glad. All right, so that's inked up. Grab our white embossing powder. So white is in with the basics embossing powder. So it's white, black, and I believe clear are the colors. So look, isn't that nice? Cute, 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 got that. And we're gonna grab our, grab our handy dandy heat tool. Now I have an old heat tool, super old heat tool. You guys that watch me know this. So look how old this is. It's got an exposed tip. Stamina up doesn't make anything that dangerous anymore. It's covered today. This is gray and has two speeds. This one does not. This is an old, 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 I, it's cracked. I've even dropped it on the ground, but I'm using it until the day it dies. All right, we're gonna heat this up and we'll, our goal is, is to melt this powder. We don't want it to turn brown, it's gone too far, flames up, we're running, right? So let's just heat this up and melt our powder and let the magic begin. So I didn't preheat the tool before I started, so it might take just a minute to warm up. There it goes. All right, very good, isn't that cool? I love it, love it. This was one of the first techniques I ever saw um, with stamping and still to this day, it amazes me, the magic of the embossing powder. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. All right, so we're gonna place this right across our card front. Now I am gonna pop this up. Let's see if I've got any black dimensionals. Black dimensionals would look really nice on this. Oh, I think I have some. 
I don't think that's what I put on the supply list, just so you know. I think I put regular ones. But I'm going to pull in black just because I have them. If I didn't have them, I could just use white. It's fine. Whatever makes you happy, right, is what I say do. All right, there we go. And we're just going to pop this up. So this is going to kind of give him his little, kind of a little bridge to walk across. Am I somewhat straight? No, I'm way crooked. Let's see if we can pull that up. One more, there we go. I can give it a little twisty maybe. Sounds terrible. All right, now, yay, much better. Cute, cute, cute. All right, let's work on our elements that we are going to just think are so sweet. So I've got a little piece of basic white cardstock. And what I do with my stamps, there they are. I've got my Memento Black pad and I'm using Memento Black I've had some people ask me, when do you choose stays on versus memento? So I'm choosing memento because I'm gonna color this with blends. And if I use stays on, it does not work well with blends. Uh, it's because they're alcohol based and the ink that is in the stays on interacts with that, where the memento is water based. So the alcohol ink doesn't bother it. All right, so I stamped my little, my little guy, girl, whatever, my little elephant, my happy little elephant, and a little balloon. So we're going to pull in our stamp and blend. So I've got polished pink and gray granite today. And you guys have seen me color a billion times, but we're going to do it anyway, right? we got to do it. Now, I like the bowl tip end to use. When I first started out, I used the brush tip, but I found it very quickly that I preferred the bull tip. Granted, I had to use them. I had to learn how to use them because they, um, they do take some practice. And I like to use a circular motion when I'm coloring because it blends. Now, I'm gonna try to get a little white sliver in there. See if I can keep it. Sometimes I color right over the top of it and I forget, but it's okay. So I'm gonna use just a circular motion, kind of blend that. You can go over the layers of your color multiple times if you'd like to. Let's do his little inside of his ear. This polished pink is a little bit of an electric color, but I think it's okay. Now I'm not putting the dark in on his ear. I think it's fine with just the light. All right, gray granite. I'm gonna start with my dark. I like the dark to do the dark first and then blend with the light. So we're gonna get these feet that are gonna be shadowed, right? give him a little definition where his little wrinkles are. So cute. And the ears in front, so let's give him some shadowing behind the head there. Maybe a little right here. Um, let's give him right some on his belly. Yeah, that'll, that'll work for now. Let's we'll see how it works. And then I'm gonna bring in my light. And again, I am gonna use a circular motion could pull in the brush tip if you want to. I mean, we've got some big space. Let's see if this, if I blown this one out. I might have blown this one out. No, this one's not bad. I use my brush tip for other things. I like to do splatter. Have you guys done splatter with your blend yet? They're awesome. It's an awesome technique to do. Um, but it does blow out your tip, so you cannot really use it well for coloring purposes anyway. All right, so that laid down color really quickly. And now I can just come back in and blend that out a little bit. Get rid of some of those harsher lines, add a little shading as I work. And of course it's gonna dry a little bit lighter. Just gonna blend that out a little bit. All right, I know that looks a little splotchy, but I'm gonna let it dry. It's okay. And I think it's gonna be cute either way. All right, I wanna go ahead and, oh, I forgot to color his whole ear. Let's finish his ear. Is this light or dark? Light, yes, I want light. I don't know why I forgot to color his ear, but he did look a little, a little funny, didn't, didn't he? All right, now his ear is colored, he's happier. All right, we are going to grub the elephant dies, and we've got this one, and then we've got the little balloon. Now I'll tell you, when you set up this balloon, you can't see where the string is. 
right? This little dot right here, if you rotate this until you can see your stamped image, I don't think you can see that on the video, but I can see when I'm, when I'm on the stamped ink, ink portion of it or not. And so if you can see that in there, then the chances of you getting the string within what's cut off is perfect, right? So we're gonna run these through the machine, die cut those out. Yes. And then I don't think I did it. I'm gonna do it, even though this one already has it on it. I'm gonna take Wink Estella and color over the surface with Wink Estella. So you could have done that before we die cut or after. It doesn't matter whichever way you want to do it, right? Let's see, can you use watercolor pencils and just push hard to make shading? Yes, Susan, you totally can. And watercolor pencils, I like to use them, you can use them with aqua painters or water painters, but I like to use them actually with our blending pens or blender pens, which has like a clear little magic juice in it. I don't know what it really is, but um, it adds just the right of moisture to easily blend that out. So you could do shading pretty easily with watercolor pencils as well by layering. So you could color and then blend it out. You, you don't even have to blend that. You can leave it colored, um, but you can blend it out. The watercolor pencils have a really soft lead. So they, they color fabulously. I do recommend keeping them sharp as you're using them because they're much easier to use that way. Um, but yeah, you can layer them over the top of each other. You can mix and match colors. They're actually really, really nice. If I remember, I will uh, purposely do a project or maybe I'll do a, a short video showing how to use those a little bit, okay? All right, so we're gonna pop him up with some dimensionals. He's just walking across this little sentiment bridge, whatever you wanna call it, right? And then I'm going to put my balloon down as well. Now I'm not gonna worry about the string. I'm gonna place this. I want it to look like it's floating and it's popped up as well. And I'm just gonna let that string kind of touch his little snout there. So it looks like he's trying to catch that balloon. Cute, I love it. All right, and then the best part are our opal rounds. I love these. These are in the 2021, 20, 2023 20, in color. So we've got our polished pink, our pale papaya, uh, fresh freesia, soft succulent and evening evergreen. So I'm gonna just pull off some pink ones, little polish pink. Now, if I were to change the color of how I was coloring the balloon and the ear, then I would change to the different gems, right? So like I said, you can make this a little more masculine if you'd like to, changing your color up. And look at that. So I got my odd numbers, but I'm cheating. I did a group of three and then just two up there. I know, Susan, you always ask me how I go about that. It's just my mood, right? Everything is just what your mood is. So super cute. And I love the shimmer on the balloon. All right, let's bring our design to the inside. So I wanted to keep this one super fast and easy and simple. Like you guys really could create this pretty quickly. Um, but I wanted to bring the design to the inside. I think that that adds such a nice touch to a handmade card to bring something to the inside, whether it's, it's stamping or it's, you know, just adding some designer paper or a layer. You know, I, I've done many a times where I've added some layers to the inside. But this time I thought, why don't we bring that really nice cloud effect that we did down that center panel right to the inside? And we don't have to do the whole thing. I just want to do a little lower area. Doesn't have to be a bunch. And I'm just going to add, just like we did on the outside, using my blending brush. I'm gonna flip that already. Just add a little bit of this balmy blue, right? To give this bottom edge, just a little cloud covers. And again, you could add a sentiment in here as well if you'd like to. Maybe another one of the little elephants would be cute in here as well. Again, make whatever makes you happy. But now you've got plenty of room to write. Isn't that cute? Can you guys see that? I hope so. Hopefully my light is not making it so you can see it. It's just kind of a fun way to tie that all together. Cute? You like it? All right. Move these out of the way. I'm going to bring in those samples. I told you I'd show you the um, 
a sneak peek of the Elephant Parade class. So again, registration is going on now. It closes on Monday. So if you want to do the Elephant Parade class, you definitely want to get your registration in right away. I'll make sure there's a link to, to find that, or you can always find my latest events, classes and events on my website, creativelyyours.com. And there is a tab at the top for classes and events. All right, let's slide these over. So here's one, isn't that cute? He's like peeking through. And of course, we bring the design to the inside. I'm not gonna let you see these for long. Cute one, isn't that cute? This one's a fun fold, sort of. Another fun fold, a little pink elephant. I have a pink elephant in there. So that's a little book fold. My adhesive's not staying stuck, okay? This one's fun, little wobble. Gotta have a little, little wobble, so cute. And of course, this is where we brought that vellum in there and then we brought the design to the inside with the paper. All right, one more. Cute, aren't these cute? I love them. I hope you guys will join me. Um, if you're not in the US and still want to join me for that class, I do offer a PDF only version as well. So that'll be available soon. You can go ahead and purchase that now or you can purchase that after. All right, if you have questions, please let me know. I'm not seeing any, but that doesn't mean that I'm not missing something. But if you guys do have questions, leave me a note in the comments below. I appreciate you joining me. And if you're enjoying the videos, please share them with your crafty friends. And if you're not already a subscriber to my YouTube channel, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and you'll get a notification hopefully when I go live. Yes? All right. I will see you all next Tuesday then. All right. Thank you and have